My name is Baid Pifel, as part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you so much for being here. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hey guys, it's me, Nikki Scott, also known as Space by Nikki. I am tuning in from Dallas, Texas. All right, Texas in the house. Texas. Yeah. My sister is in Houston, so a couple of, maybe what, two hours away from you or something? Four hours? Yeah, about two, three hours if you're Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Texas, I guess you could go fast. So tell us, let's, let's dive into it. Thinking Go Rich. When did you start? How did you start? Starting with the book, I'm probably on my third time reading the book. I started back in 2006. I had just finished graduating high school and I was like, you know what? I need to upgrade my book collection. So I went to Amazon and looked up some books, but I didn't find the book there. I actually went to Barnes and Nobles and found the book. It's a really popular bookstore in my town. So I got the book. That's the first time I read it. The second time I did audio on YouTube. I love doing audio and audibles and things like that. So I heard it then. And then, of course, they say hear it in threes. That's also in the book as well. Hearing things multiple times, seeing it and taking the information in. So after I did it that third time, that's why I was like, let me just buy this book. Because <laughs> clearly I love it that much. That is awesome. So what were some of the principles that right away popped out to you? And you're like, I got to implement this. Yeah, it was definitely in chapter three. It had to do with faith. I know everybody has different beliefs and just you have to believe in something in yourself. That was one of the biggest things. I always knew that I could do it, but it, I never let it dawn on me that, you know, you have to be that fire in pushing yourself and believing in yourself. So in chapter three, when they mentioned faith, having the spiritual and conscious mind to put everything together and to be able to see it and believe it in your head is is the truest thing I can say. I've done that. I'm a believer in that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people, when they when they hear that initially, they think we're talking about religious beliefs. But in the book, when you read it, especially with the chapter on faith, what I love about it is it has nothing to do with that. It has mm -hmm. to do with believing in that you're able to do it and being able to have that confidence in yourself. So I think that's a very, very important chapter. Now, you yeah. could have religious views. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's just that this is not talking about that. Right. And that's what I love. It kind of fueled me. Then moving forward into chapter seven, that's what really kind of put everything in perspective. It's more so the wordings, how you talk to yourself, how you think. It's literally taking it and breaking it down to the smallest form. Everything is controlled by your thoughts. So if you think positive, then positive things will come. And so that helped me change my perspective. And from there, I want to say about 2009, that's when I started to really receive more opportunities. So I read the book again. I happened to be on the airplane. I was going to California to visit some family and I read the book again. So on my way back from California, that's when I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do makeup. I'm going to do beauty. I'm going to do everything I want to do full force. If I want to do it, I'm going to believe it, write it down. And I'd have to say from that trip, reading that book over three to four times has really just changed my whole perspective, changed my life. Uh, it's really put a lot of, fuel in me and it keeps me going so i have to i have to look back from it time to time you got to have your bookmarks definitely no i think individuals when they go back and they reread the book you got what you got the first time around and every time that you go back i mean at least that's what's happening to me every time i go back i'm like where was this page how come i missed it yes. like, damn, this is exactly what i need so it's like one of those books it's not a novel you read one time and that's it it's a, it's a workbook to me. It's like you yes. got to study it constantly. And, you know, we all evolve as human beings, as individual circumstances, all of these different things, especially if you're applying it to business, you know, your, your circumstances are changing. You need to develop yourself. So I think going back to the book, it's one of the most important things that you could do, just going back and refreshing on, on the principle. So I agree with that 100%. Yes, I had to. I feel like refreshing the book, holding my bookmarks. And it also has me, when I re look at that book, it makes me relook at my goals again. My affirmations have been fine-tuned. I have certain things that I say every morning because of reading that book and other books that are related uh, to Napoleon Hill and other books that he likes and things that I looked up about him. It causes me to read more books. 
And so that made me fine tune a lot of my affirmations. That's where it made me get an affirmation. I didn't do that. Wake up in the morning and, and speak things about myself and about my family and things that I want in my life. And that's something that I feel like if you do that, it really does make a change and it makes you feel good. Definitely. And, and I think it gives you discipline. It gives you persistence. It gives you the level of awareness. Now you're conscious mm -hmm. about things. I mean, yeah. it has so many benefits that, and, 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 and a lot of the benefits we haven't discovered why does it work. We have been able to do little here and there. We have an idea why it works. But to me, it's like, why would you want to figure that out? We know it works. Just do it. You know, right. don't, don't question it. Just do it. We know I already yeah. worked. We don't have to convince you. If you have to convince you, then, you know, we still got a lot of work to do. We got to check your coachability. Work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> if, if successful people say do it, just do it. And that's one of my philosophies. If they make more money than you, I listen to it. That's it. Simple yeah. as that. Okay. That means they've done it. Mm -hmm. Now, with a few exceptions of a few individuals that may be not making the money in the right manners, that I right. can't talk about it on IG live, but right. everybody knows right and wrong. So yes. I'm cool with that. So here's my question. Would you agree that if we were like, what, what would have happened if you would have had this book, not after high school? What if you had this maybe in 10th grade? What if everybody got it at the senior year in, in high school? How would our country, how would our environment change? If this book had been, in my hands or any in my peers hands in high school i think it would have did a major shift i think it would have changed a lot of perspectives a lot of thoughts and probably controlled the way we are acting now in 2019 i felt a lot of those things negative not believing in yourself the dropout rates all of those would have shifted turned for the better at least an increase from the normal it can be, what, 45 to 50% of people who may graduate high school, may leave middle school to even go to high school. I feel like that would have shifted to a higher 60% uh, of people who do go instead of 40 to 50 to people who don't go. I think it would have made a, a definite difference. I think reading it and then knowing that your peers like, oh, you're reading that book too? Oh, that's my favorite. Or we're required to read it for school. I think that would definitely have... Uh, changed everything and changed perspectives and given more people uh fuel to do what they want to do to go after their dreams who knows who would have been the best doctor right now or the best lawyer or the president or anything along those lines who knows who would have been in his cabinet and so forth yeah that's crazy i mean i never met anybody i said i read moby deck and i became a millionaire so <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, that that's just right. This book has probably made more millionaires than anything else that I could think of, beside yeah. God and higher power. Beside oh, yeah. I mean this is this is yeah. definitely a top five. The authentic way. Authentic. Yeah, correct. I agree with that. So if somebody has not read the book, Thinking Gorage, in your personal opinion, why should they go read it and study it? I think they should go read it and go study the book is because it's not one person, it's not five, it's not 10, it's decades of people. This book was originated back in 1937. This is 2019. Hey guys, sorry about that, I had some technical difficulties, but I am back, you. can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, we got you. So let's continue, you were saying, why is it important for people to pick up? Now, now let's go back to the original question that I had, I, I had a follow-up question. Why do you think they don't teach this book in our public school? Why is it not part of the curriculum? I mean, after 100 years, you would think that some school district have caught up with knowing that this does give results. If there is so many millionaires and so many successful individuals talking about it, why is it the school district not picking this book up and put it in the school system? Why is that not the case? Or if it's the case, why is it not all over the place? I would say the reason why they're not putting it in the schools is because the school is already a system. It's a school system. So they want everyone's mind to be trained, go to school, go to college, follow these steps because we want you to do A, B, and C. That book doesn't talk about anything in a system. <laughs> it talks about using your natural abilities, your natural beliefs, things in your mind that are controlled by a school. The school tells you you need to be here at this time, not work for yourself if that's something that you want 
want to do, go out and pursue it. I'm not saying that going to school or the school system is bad, but it's more for free thinking from that book. In school, it's more controlled thinking. They're controlling everything that you're doing, the direction that you go in. Ultimately, at the end, you make your turns, your rights, your nicks, your crannies, etc. But that book right there is going to give you more space and more paths to go down versus school. It's going to be a little bit more controlled. And I don't know about you, but when I go on journeys, I like to go alone because I can wander. I agree with that 100%. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Hopefully, yes. we get to do more. I appreciate you taking this busy time out of your schedule and sharing with us about Thinking Grow Rich. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was definitely a pleasure. Everyone, please definitely check me out at Face by Nikki. It was so much fun talking to all of you guys. Please go get the book, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, started back from 1937. That date compared to 2019, there's a reason. My life has changed because of the book, and so can yours. So definitely check it out. Thank you so much, my elite mastermind. You got it. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.